What's going on guys? Great Disciple back with another video and we are continuing our education and getting better at Call of Duty. Now in the last episode I spoke about guns and I was remiss that I did not speak on attachments. So let me do that first. Attachments on your guns are very important and again this is going to be determined by the playlist that you go into core or hardcore. In my personal opinion and this is my opinion the best attachment you can put on any gun is stock and I know a lot of you won't agree with me I mean I know if you're in the core mode you got high caliber and you got long barrel everybody loves those but I don't play core so I don't care about those rapid fire in my opinion is worthless just about on any gun laser sight I think ruins most of the guns as well quick draw can be overcome by fast hands and fast hands does more than quick draw so why run it so I say stock number one, whether I'm running an SMG, which by the way, it increases your movement speed to 105%, 105%, you guys, you can't beat that. On an AR, you put stock on, you bring that movement speed almost up to an SMG. On an LMG, if you put stock on it, you increase the movement speed up to almost an AR. Why would you guys not run stock? It makes it more difficult for you to be hit, okay? Obviously, if you're a head glitcher, there's no reason for stock, okay? So you may not need it. Second most important attachment on a gun to me, grip. Love grip. Grip works so well on guns like the Weevil. It works great on the CUDA, by the way. Uh, it works really well on some of the LMGs. I love grip on the HVK and the KN44. That attachment is legit. So on pretty much every single gun I'm gonna run in this game, I'm gonna have a stock and I'm gonna have a grip on it. Some of the guns, in my opinion, need optics, like the uh, BOA-3 sight on the Dingo. I love the ELO sight on the Razorback because the, the, the iron sights are so obtrusive to me. I mean, those are two right off the bat. Some of the other ones, it's just a matter of training yourself. So, attachments. Again, stock, grip. In my opinion, most important, I play hardcore. On the core mode, I know there are better attachments to use with the, with the high caliber, of course, because for those ridiculous view kick headshots. All right, now let's talk spawns a little bit. I mentioned this briefly in the original video that started this whole series that I'm doing. Spawns, the easiest way to determine these, and again, after you pick the game mode that you're going to run in, and I think the majority of people who watch me play Domination, the easiest way to determine spawns in Domination is when you die, remember where you come in. Okay, it's that easy. You gotta look at the flags that are on your team and the flags that are on the opposing team. You gotta look at where your teammates are positioned and then look at where you spawned in at. That is the easiest way to do this, okay? It's just basic spawn knowledge. The other ways to do it are to call in a hater, hit the start button and watch the map. Just watch, watch the map. Call in a mothership and you can see everything. Use a talent and you can see them spawning in. Here's what I know about spawns, and I'm going to try to explain this as easily as possible, okay? I thought about doing overhead shots of maps and explaining it to you, but it's just too difficult. In domination, behind the A and the C flag, there are three spawn points. Two dominant spawn positions and one secondary, okay? The rule of thumb is this. If you walk into the enemy's spawn, if you're standing in one of their spawn points, they will not spawn there. Also, if you are looking at a spawn point of the enemy, the computer will not allow the enemy to spawn there. So, here's the rule. If there are three spawn points behind A and C, if you're standing in one looking at the other, they're going to spawn in the third. It's that simple. And if you watch me rush spawn, if you watch me do a mega kill, an ultra kill, a super kill, you will see me manipulate spawn. Anytime I put up a high scoring gameplay, you will see me in the enemy spawn rotating between the three dominant spawn points. Also, if you're in their spawn and in, in a friendly on your team is in the spawn as well, they will what's called flip out. Meaning that they will go to a safe spawn. A safe spawn is usually on the left or the right side of B. It's hard to explain it, but it's like Treyarch, Treyarch is really good about this. They program the spawns to where if there's too much danger within the enemy spawn point, i.e. two guys in the spawn, they will flip to a safety spawn, which is usually on one of the sides of the map. Okay, and you'll also see me do this. You'll you'll see a gameplay coming up, or you may have already seen it this week on Redwood, where I manipulate the spawns really well. Again, you just have to look at where you spawn in once you die, and that is the easiest way. Now, if you're playing a game mode like TDM, Kill Confirmed. 
there are dominant spawns in those, but they're hard to to manipulate. It's too difficult. The, the best ones to use are Safeguard, Domination, and Free For All. Those have set spawn points that you can really manipulate to your advantage. And Free For All, you guys, if your focus is on getting a high KD so you can show it off to your friends, there is no better game mode ever, ever has there been a better game mode to do this than Free For All. Okay, you could say Demolition, but that requires a team to spawn trap. If you are a solo player and you want a high KD and a high score per minute, and you want to show it off to everybody and scare them when you go into a lobby, just go play free for all. I remember back in Ghost when it was primarily all I played, my KD was a 4.5 to a 5, and I would get into lobbies and people would send me messages thinking that I was a hacker. And I would just explain to them that, listen, all, all I do is play free for all mainly. That's why I have such a high KD. It is the easiest way to maintain a high KD. So spawns, remember, all it is. Look at where you are when you die and you spawn in. That's it. It's that simple. There's no rocket science here. And the only way you're going to get better at spawn knowledge is if you play the game. You've got to play. One last thing. I want to say this. Rushing spawn, like you guys see me do so often, my rule is this. I am always, when I'm rushing a spawn, I am anticipating going up against three guys at all times. Every single gun in the game is designed to kill three guys before you reload it. Except for the LMGs, you can kill about ten. So pretty much an AR or a submachine gun, they are designed to kill three guys because that's pretty much your worst case scenario. If, if the whole entire enemy team spawns on you, you know, four, five, six guys, you're going to die. But at all times, if there's just three coming at you, you should be able to kill them, okay? So remember that. Don't reload after one kill. We're going to talk about that in the next one. All right, you guys, if you learned something, hit that thumbs up button. As always, leave a comment down below. We'll talk about spawns or attachments. And subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.